This video contains instances of infanticide and murder. I will be going into a bit of detail on these instances, so if that disturbs you or anyone watching this video with you, viewer discretion is advised. What's up, you crazy kids? You ready for some spooks today? You ready to get creeped the f out? All right, let's go. We already blew the curse word thing with YouTube, so we're just gonna go with it. The Crybaby Bridge has a haunting legend that will bring chills to anyone wanting to start a family of their own. Would you be shocked to know that there is more than one Crybaby Bridge? In small town America, there are numerous legends surrounding small low-key bridges dubbed Crybaby Bridge. They tell tales of murdered babies that get dumped off on the sides of a bridge, forever doomed to wail in the darkness for a mother's love that'll never come. What if anything has ever come from these legends? Anything that's kind of like come to fruition or come true in the smallest sense? Has there been anything at all? I don't know, we'll find out. Is there any merit to the cases surrounding them? If so, which crybaby bridge is the original? I'm here today to investigate these legends and try to suss out which one's real and which one's nothing more than an old wives tale told to kids to get them to not go out at night. Welcome to another episode of Haunted History Unmasked. But before we get into the legends, if you like being creeped out or frightened while eating some snacks on YouTube, please drop a like, leave a comment letting me know what you want to see next, and if you haven't, subscribe to my channel because I'm desperately hemorrhaging money here running this channel, and if you don't, I'm going to go bankrupt, and this shit's going to just go tits up real quick. All right, so if you're like me, you heard the term crybaby bridge and assumed it was a lone bridge somewhere in the U.S. that's kind of dilapidated and run down that people just kind of refer to as the crybaby bridge. And that there's some legend following this bridge as to why it's called crybaby bridge about a mother that got rid of a baby and the, it haunts the bridge. Just, you know, the Cliff Notes version. That's the legend you've probably heard. Or that there's a bridge in your town that there has been rumored to be mothers th tossing away unwanted children, whether they be deformed or sick, or they just didn't want them. They go, we yeet right off the side of the bridge. And therefore we have the crybaby bridge in your town. Now, if you've heard all that, it's, it, they're all kind of valid because there's not just one crybaby bridge. Basically, if you live in a rural area and there's a relatively rundown bridge nearby, odds are people at some point or another have referred to it as a crybaby bridge. This is because the term crybaby bridge refers more to the folklore surrounding the bridge than the actual like area itself if that makes sense. Which is why you hear different versions of the legend wherever you go. Like in Kentucky, on a bridge off Sleepy Hollow Road, I know, sounds sketch already, the legend goes that mothers, there's a bridge in town, mothers would go there, they'd drop off their unwanted, sick or deformed babies off the side of the bridge to drown, and at night you'll hear the wails of these said babies crying in the middle of the night for their mother. Or we have the bridge off in Ohio on Egypt Road. The legend is that a baby accidentally fell off the bridge and drowned, which after people started to hear the baby crying at night. Now there is one legend coming straight out of the good old state of Texas that brings to light a legend I'm familiar with because it sounds eerily similar to one I've heard in my area. It states that a mother under duress from postpartum depression plunged her car off of the spook bridge about four miles south of DeKalb, Texas, killing her and drowning her baby in the frigid waters. Her being so grief-stricken, she wanders late at night searching for her child as it cries alone in the darkness. Now with all this information out of the way, I bet you're asking, is any of this real? And I get you. Uh, skeptic to skeptic, here we go, man to man, man to woman, man to... People, I get it. I get the skepticism. There are some folks who believe that these legends are just nonsense made up for the internet. Biggest of all is a folklorist named Jesse Glass. Mr. Glass contests that these stories have been made up to be sensationalized and spread all across the internet. His proof being that the legends from Maryland and Ohio didn't surface until 1999. And for those of you that weren't alive back then, it was basically the point where more and more people started getting on the internet. So it would make sense that 
These stories could be made up considering it was way harder to fact check things than it is today. But a fact checker Mr. Glass was. He went through local and oral record to try and confirm these legends and found that the Crybaby Bridge legends, at least in Maryland and Ohio, had no local record of existing before 1999. Now to give a little credence to Mr. Glass so you don't just, you know, immediately appeal to authority kind of deal, he graduated with a PhD in English with emphasis on American literature and went on to write a compilation of folklore called Ghosts and Legends of Carroll County, Maryland, of which it is deemed as a local legacy by the Library of Congress. So if we're to assume Mr. Glass has any real credibility in this field, it'd be safe to say that at least the legends in Maryland don't get a pass. But what about the other locations of these legends? Well, in Texas, there is a story in DeKalb, which we just talked about, and then there is also one in Lufkin. Minimal information on this is known except that a person drove their car along the bridge and ended up having a child's handprint on their car. All you have to do for the legend to, I guess, activate is turn off your engine, turn off your lights, and sit and wait and you might be able to hear a baby crying. It's also been reported that the ghost of the mother, Angelina, is seen searching the area for her baby. And then we come to the story I am most familiar with, the Sarah Jane Bridge. The way I heard it was that a mother had given birth to a child, the father didn't want it, so he drove to the bridge where he brutally murdered his wife and then tossed the baby into the water and fed the mother to the gators. There are claims that the baby's name was Sarah Jane, but there's also been claims that the mother's name was Sarah Jane, so take that with what you will. To bring more to light, we come to Paul, a writer on the blog site rediscoveringsoutheasttexas.com where he states that he has been on the legendary Sarah Jane Road and Sarah Jane Bridge many times at night and has yet to really discover anything aside from getting skunked while fishing. However, on one night, he and three friends decided to go out onto the bridge and see if they could discover anything. All was relatively calm and pretty uneventful until Paul looked off into the tree line and noticed an odd ball of light uh, just kind of whisking through the tree line really quickly. Now, Paul doesn't really have an explanation for this, like, he, he, he would love for it to be, you know, ooh, if evidence, but Paul just, he, he goes on to say that, oh, it could be swamp gas that caused some of these, like an optical illusion, like, you know, moonlight hitting the gas and the, you know, just kind of weird chemical chemistry stuff. Could this event have actually been Sarah Jane's ghost searching for her baby that she lost? While I'd love to sit here and say, hell yeah, this is proof of a ghostly encounter. As a good skeptic with any kind of credibility on my name so far, I have to say that without concrete evidence, it's just, uh, I'll say it's plausible. But what about the Salem Crybaby Bridge? In Salem, Ohio, off of Egypt Road, it's reported that the legend of the Crybaby Bridge started in the 1930s, which directly conflicts with Jesse Glass had he, because he had said before that there was no prior reports of the legend before 1999. So the legend has it that a couple were out having a picnic with their baby. The two then got into an argument, a little bit of a, con a little conflict going on, and it got so heated that they didn't hear their baby wander off and fall into the river. Even with the baby's cries and screams and the splashing of the water, the couple still did not hear the baby over their fighting. Locals who frequent this area swear that they can hear a baby's cries when they go up to the rusted skeleton that was once the crybaby bridge. Kimberly Mitchell, a local paranormal historian, has a different version of the legend. Her version goes, a woman births a child out of wedlock and then is disowned by her family and under great duress travels to the infamous bridge, ending her child's life there. She states that the mother was starving when she had the baby. Because of that and no prospects for food in sight, the baby couldn't breastfeed. So this, compiled with the mother suffering mentally from the distressing events leading here, decided to end the baby's misery by throwing it in the river. Which to me, that really doesn't make sense. I'm sure if you went to a diner or something similar, there would be someone there willing to feed you or at least your baby. So tossing your baby off a bridge seems just incredibly redundant and stupid. Like more so, more so stupid than redundant. Because it's just, it's like, oh, my baby's starving. I can't feed it. 
Alright, well, I guess I gotta go find some food now. Like, if you were if you were so worried for your baby, why not just take it to a church or a fire station? Someone there could have assisted you, but I'm sure postpartum depression mixed with hunger and distress from being recently disowned caused her to not be thinking straight. Now, I'm not justifying infanticide. I'm just stating a bit of an explanation to her thought process. Mitchell also states that while out on a paranormal investigation, at the bridge, they picked up something on their EVP. It's an electronic voice phenomenon. It's a little box thing that like picks up, I think, radio waves or signals throughout radio waves. It's a weird thing. I'm not a professional paranormal guy, but EVP telling them to get out, which to me sounds really fucking cheesy. Like that's a typical horror movie trope. Like who said that? The mom? The baby? You imagine, you imagine just like a little baby voice being like, Get out! Get, Get out, out of my bed, my bridge! But, but I'm getting sidetracked. I'll save all my skepticism in my notes to the end. Mitchell also goes on to say that it's not just the bridge that's said to be haunted. In fact, people who live in the area say all of Egypt Road is haunted. A quote from Mitchell is, People start seeing a large, dark figure that either crosses the road on Pine Lake or they see it on Egypt Road. Mitchell also goes on to say, Many people believe this is the ghost of the father who lost the child. He's referred to as the Dark Man of the Woods. Whether it's the cries of a ghost child or the visions of a dark figure forever haunting the woods, people swear that this area is full of paranormal activity, even though there isn't any proof that a child was killed here. So what do you think? Are all these stories just created for internet points, or do you think all of these legends point to something a little deeper, maybe a little bit more sinister. If you ask me, I think there was definitely an instance of foul play around a bridge that got telephoned into the legend that makes up the Crybaby Bridge. But I don't think there's a host of ghost babies wailing in the middle of the night, wanting for their mom. But people believe what they want to believe. Adventure is intoxicating, and when you have something like a local legend fall into your plate, you'll do whatever you can to prove it to be true. I think the Crybaby Bridges are a version of group thought and people wanting to be a part of history, whether it be public or just local legend. I don't think this legend has any real merit beyond a murder case that got twisted into a ghost story that impressively has gone nationwide. My reasoning being that each version of this story hits the exact same points each time. One, a woman has a child out of wedlock or doesn't want it. Two, there's a father or family that doesn't want anything to do with the mother. Three, the mother callously tosses her baby off of a bridge. And four, at around midnight, you can hear babies crying in the night. The only legend that seems plausible is the Sarah Jane Bridge legend because it tosses in a potential reality anchor that the other stories didn't include. The murder of the mother and physical handprints on a car with a witness. And even that is kind of iffy, kind of maybe. What with the EVP saying, get out, and locals not being able to totally agree on crucial points. But maybe I'm off base with my analysis. What do you think? Sure does make for a scary bedtime story though. But thank you guys for watching. I hope I was able to ease some butts for bedtime so you don't think a ghost baby's gonna come and crawl on you in the middle of the night. Or maybe not. Maybe you still hold on to your belief that there is more to this story than what I just went over. In which case, I welcome you to challenge my video in the comments. I look forward to what you guys have to say about this and what you think I should tackle next. Also remember, hit that subscribe button, leave a like if you enjoyed it, hit that bell so YouTube doesn't throttle me in the algorithm. Have a great night, remember to leave the light on. Bye!